Well, believe it or not, we are starting this Atlantic hurricane season with something to keep an eye on. And as that swirl, you can see off the coast of Florida, which you look at and you say, that looks pretty ominous. It's a wave of low pressure. It's left over from early week thunderstorms. They're actually in the northeast and swirled away down toward the southeastern coastline. They're persistent, but we're not expecting development here. The National Hurricane Center is giving it about a 10% chance, but it will cross Florida today. Northern and central sections will pick up showers and thunderstorms as well. Much needed rain. Much of northern Florida is in drought at the moment. So, and our hurricane expert will be watching this very closely. Dr. Rick Nabb is in-house and as a member of the National Hurricane Center, he's tracked both wild and mild seasons. And he shows us what June can be like in the Atlantic Basin. The Atlantic hurricane season is very peaked, meaning the bulk of the activity happens in August, September and into October. June and July are kind of ramp up months where we occasionally get a storm, maybe even a hurricane, but nowhere near the level of activity is certainly in terms of major hurricanes that you see in the peak of the season. Early in the season in June, we tend to look pretty close to home for development, including the Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and maybe just east of Florida. So looking there right now as we are beginning the hurricane season on June 1, a little bit of thunderstorm activity down in the southwestern Caribbean Sea, and a couple of tropical waves have been making their way very far to the south and pretty far uh, south of Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. But because we have a little bit of a ridge of high pressure in the Caribbean, not as much wind shear as we've seen earlier in the year, it's an area to watch. And this is the place that we got to watch. So this bubble up of thunderstorms down here, we'll be watching over the next several days, nothing developing imminently as we begin the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season. Back to you. All right, here we are at the beginning. Scott has a look at the forecast, what we might be expecting over the next few months. Yeah, that's right. And of course, uh, just looking at these numbers, it looks like most uh, of the forecasts are calling for an average season. But remember, it only takes one storm to make for a bad year. And uh, these numbers can't predict if or where landfalls will occur. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the first named storm of the 2011 season would be Arlene, followed by Brett and then Cindy. And of course, uh, we're watching this disturbance, this area of low pressure off of the southeast coast, non-tropical in nature as it continues to drift toward the west southwest at about 15 to 20 miles per hour will bring some clouds and showers toward uh, central Florida uh, throughout the day today along the I-4 quarter as well as uh, I-75 later on today. Some of the storms could uh, be a little strong here as we track most of the moisture uh, right now offshore, but we've seen some uh, showers moving through uh, the first coast early this morning around the Jacksonville, Florida area, uh, finding some showers and storms. We're going to track that disturbance crossing the Sunshine State then moving in toward the Gulf of Mexico and then ultimately some of that moisture is going to make it into northern Mexico and southern Texas by the end of the week. Eric? Hopefully southern Texas get a little bit of rainfall there. Now we're tracking the threat of storms on land as well. I want to show you our exclusive Torcon forecast. What we're expecting as we get into the afternoon hours. We've already seen some strong storms in upstate New York this morning. We give interior New England a 3 out of 10 as we head toward the afternoon. That cold front does approach a little further off toward the south. Another 3 out of 10 as you work toward the D.C. area, southeastern New York as well. 3 is the highest number that Dr. Forbes is issuing today. That includes northwestern Kansas and southwestern Nebraska. Could be seeing some storms firing there across the central and southern plains this afternoon. All right. In the meantime, we're going to track more heat and humidity around Baltimore as well as DC. Uh, right now, Baltimore 73 degrees. Yesterday you had a record high of 97 degrees. New York City 70 degrees right now. Get ready for upper 80s. Maybe a few scattered showers and storms later on. It's 70 degrees right now in Jacksonville. Getting ready to sweat across the south and the east. How about heading home later on today? Well, we are going to find some thunderstorms out on the map. I-40 from Knoxville, Tennessee to Greensboro, North Carolina isolated storms, especially across the higher terrain. See those afternoon boomers firing up and on I-10 from Mobile, Alabama to Jacksonville, Florida, and mainly toward Jacksonville. All right, have a great and safe day. Wake up with Al is next. All right, we'll leave you with a shot of Endeavor coming home for the last time. Remember, the last shuttle will be Atlantis, and that happening in July, just a short while from now. Gear down and lock. Every morning, all across America, women have discovered the secret to a great day because they've discovered the power of Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. The only one that nourishes with active naturals oats, it's clinically proven to 